of his love and wonders of his love. Christmas Eve. How excited are you about this day? I am just over the top excited. My name is Troy Mercil, First Washington United Methodist Church pastor. It is just great to be with you wherever you're watching, whoever you're watching with. Merry Christmas. So glad to be here with you today. If, if you're watching online with us, uh, whether it be on Facebook or YouTube, com put in the comment section where you're watching from. We would love to know. And, and Merry Christmas. Again, Merry Christmas to each and every one of you. Welcome to worship. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it because He, God, has given us the Savior. That's what we're celebrating today here on Christmas Eve. We're celebrating the birth of Jesus the Christ child. And as we get ready to go through this worship service, I, I, I just would love for you, wherever you are, just to... Say, you know what? Today is going to be about worshiping God. I, I, I tell you what, let's, let's just pray real quick. Uh, we're going to pray. And we're going to ask God to be with us as we go through this worship service. I told you on Sunday about a buddy of mine who, who gets up with his, his dogs and, and they watch the, the worship service. It, it was, it, it's phenomenal to hear how some of you over the course of the last few days watch Sunday's worship service. I'd love to hear how you're wor worshiping God today. Now, a couple things that you are going to need or, or while you're watching today. One, you're going to need some kind of light at the, at the end of this worship service. You're going to either need a candle, uh, your phone, maybe even your Christmas tree because we're going to turn out the lights and we're going to sing Silent Night. Okay, that's a promise. Before we do, let's take a deep breath. Could be any time of the day and, and 
we've prepared for this moment. That's what Advent is all about. It's preparation. So now we take that deep breath. We we'll relax. Let's just get ready to focus on this Jesus, our Savior. God, we thank you so much for this day. Lord, many of us have looked forward to Christmas. There are so many more, though, that God don't look forward to Christmas. It's, it's a lonely time. It's, it's a, a time in which they just want to move on and get into next year. Lord, I just ask that each and every one of us, whether we're excited about Christmas or whether we're not excited about Christmas, that we today, wherever we're watching, just say, you know what, for the next few minutes, we're going to focus in on Jesus. We're going to focus on, uh, on those candles of hope and peace and joy and love. We're going to focus in on the real reason for this season, the gift of Jesus. Lord, I ask that wherever we are, our minds will be filled with the Holy Spirit. Lord, I thank you for delivering this message today to the many people that are watching. And wherever they're watching from, God, I just ask that you be present in their lives as well. It's in Jesus' name we pray and all God's people said, Amen. I want to ask you to stand as you are able. We're getting ready to sing to Jesus our very first song. Let's be filled with the Holy Spirit.
Awesome. So glad again to be worshiping Jesus, the birth of the Savior. This is an opportunity right now in this worship service of giving back to God, of just giving back to Him and, and saying, you know what, Lord, just take my gift. You have given us a gift, a huge gift today for our salvation in Jesus. This is just something to give back to. There's multiple ways you can do this, but one of the great ways you can do it is right here where you are, watching online. You can go to our website, firstwashingtonumc.org, and you can go to the Give tab and, and set up your gift. You can give to the general budget, which is our, our mission, our mission and ministry budget. Or you can give to the mission of benevolence, of reaching out to other people. That's what we're going to be doing. Again, there's going to be a huge announcement next week coming of, of what's going to happen in 2021 with this church, this church that God has brought together to do something that is going to just be humongous. And I can't wait to, to tell you what it is. But today you get that opportunity of giving that gift back. If this is your first time on, welcome. We're so glad that you're with us. If this is your thousandth time on here, we're so glad that you are here. And if you're watching with your family or your friends, Maybe you've set up a watch party with people around the United States. We're so glad you're here. Get ready. Get ready. We're getting ready to celebrate the, the birth of Jesus through prayer, through message, through song, through the lighting of the candles. All right. Let's get ready to sing this next song. Stand as you're able again as we get ready to sing praises to Jesus. All right, we have made it. We have made it to Christmas Eve, the day in which we light the Christ candle. But again, for those of you who may have not have joined us over the course of the last four weeks as we've been preparing for this very, very moment, this is important that you see this, okay, and that you hear this because it's going to be a question that gets brought back up here in just a few moments. This, this candle here represented the candle of hope. We are going into 2021 with a hope of Jesus, and we can celebrate that tonight. We have this one lit for the candle of peace. Maybe you haven't been peace-filled this year, and maybe that's one you want to reflect on of how you can have peace in your life and give that peace to other people. Maybe it's this candle over here, the pink candle. It's joy. It represents the candle of joy. How many of you have had joy in your life this year? And how many of you can find joy in something that's getting ready to happen in 2021. And this candle here, this candle represents love. How are you going to love differently this year? How are we going to, as a church and as a community, as Christ followers, go out and love harder and deeper and more this year? And now we light the granddaddy. The granddaddy of them all. This is the Christ candle. This is the one we've been waiting for. This is the one we've been preparing for. Christmas, the day that Jesus came to restore the world, restore each and every one of us as individuals, to forgive us of our sins so that we can do all of these things, these gifts that He has brought. Today, as we do so, we're going to pray. Advent hope moves us that candle. Advent joy stirs us. Advent peace stills us. And Advent love leads us. Today we're here to affirm that we have a king and his name is Jesus. It is time that we set flame to the Christ candle. And as we do so, I'm, I'm going to turn this, I'm going to turn the lights off real quick, just so we can focus on this. As, as I, I talk, we, we just stay on this. 
I want you to focus on that candle. That's what Advent looks like. That's what Christ, Christmas, looks like. It, it represents hope and peace and joy and love. And at the center of it all is Jesus. We believe that Jesus is the Son of God. He was born of the Virgin Mary in Bethlehem of Judea. He was the long-awaited Messiah whose coming was prophesied. The same Jesus lives today in our hearts. He deserves our highest loyalty and total commitment. And in Jesus Christ, our hope is fulfilled, our love is consummated, our joy is complete, and our peace is sealed. Rejoice! A Savior is born. A Savior is born indeed. Joy to the world. Gracious God, we thank you again for this day. Lord, we have looked forward to Christmas. And just for many, it is the time in which we usually come together with our family and friends. But this year is kind of different. This year is very, very different. Some of us have, have chosen not to be with family for, for health reasons, for COVID-related reasons. Some of us have said, you know what, we're going to be with family regardless. Wherever we are today, wherever we're watching today, wherever we are worshiping today, God, I just ask that we worship like we've never worshiped before. We are happy, joyful, peace-filled people that are filled with the love of Jesus. God, I thank you so much for this day. I thank you for your son, Jesus. I pray for anyone anywhere that is happy. I pray for anyone anywhere that is sad. I pray for anyone anywhere that is joy-filled. I pray for anyone anywhere 
that feels hopelessness today. Lord, we, may we be a community, a church that is lifting up these words that as Jesus left that manger. Because some of us get stuck that Jesus just stayed in that manger. Lord, as a community of faith, he grew up. He taught us a prayer that we still lift up to you today. And as a community, wherever we are, we lift up this prayer to you today. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. All right. Again, we are so thankful, so happy that you are with us. We, we are in our own little living room. We have been for the last few weeks coming to you from our own living room set up and wherever you're watching today whether it be in your living room your your bedroom your den wherever it might be we are so glad that you're worshiping with us today i, I how about this for the next few minutes we're going to focus in on a lesson in scripture and we're going to go down a, a we're going to go down a track in which god leads us okay so if you're ready to do that with me i'm going to go over here and find a seat in my comfy recliner and and we're going to talk a little bit about this passage of scripture found in Matthew. Matthew is one of my favorite books in the Bible and he has a, a great story to tell about this Jesus, this birth of this Jesus. And for some, we may this may be your first time in a long time or maybe first time ever being on a worship service and some of, uh, of us are sitting around going, wow this sure doesn't look like the Christmas of old. You know, when we would all gather inside of a church, and I can't remember a Christmas Eve service that I haven't been around a bunch of people. I'm going to tell you something. You are watching and worshiping with hundreds, if not thousands of people today for one reason. That is the worship of a Savior. The worship of Jesus, our Savior. And the passage of Scripture that is picked out tonight is going to talk about after Jesus was born. Many of us have heard the story of how Mary and Joseph traveled into to Bethlehem and how there was no room at the inn because Joseph forgot to make the reservations at the Holiday Inn and they had no place to stay. They were coming in for a census and everybody and their brother literally were there. And they had no place to stay. And Mary was nine months pregnant. She was about, give, about to give birth to the Savior of the world. And nobody other than those two knew it. Anybody walking past them, think about it. Think about the hustle and bustle that goes on in our everyday lives. Think about the hustle and bustle that led up to this, the perfect Christmas present, the a Amazon folks that were going to just fill your order or whoever you were buying from, how they were going to get it shipped and how you tracked the packages every day. Jumped online. I know because I did it for the first time in a long time or maybe even ever. I jumped on to track a package and how frustrated we would get when it would say, delayed. <laughs> or better yet, delivered, and you go, I don't have it, put on porch, <laughs> I don't have one, <laughs> I don't have a porch, but I do, um, and, and then find out that it was delivered to the neighbor across the street, or maybe delivered to a different house all the way, we had some folks that were waiting on a package that was delivered to the church, that, uh, that's across the road, it was a great way of meeting them, I think that's God's way of saying here, we're going to meet other people. It was through the package delivery system. <laughs> I don't know. But think about that first night when Jesus was born. What all happened? I, I want you to put your place in, in, in the place of either Joseph or Mary on this night. What are these young parents going to expect? How, was life, how had life changed in an instant for them. 
They, they saw it coming. They knew it was coming. They've had nine months to plan. But now it's here. If you're a parent, if, you can, if, if you've ever had a child, you know, and that first one, when that first one comes, they don't come out with instructions. And you're sitting there going, now what? Now what do I do? Don't you think that Joseph and Mary may have been the same way? And here's the passage of Scripture that followed Jesus' birth. It's in Matthew chapter 2. It said, After Jesus was born in Bethlehem village, Judah territory, this was during Herod's kingship, a band of scholars arrived in Jerusalem from the east. They asked around, Where can we find and pay homage to the newborn king of the Jews? We observed a star in the eastern sky that signaled his birth. We're on pilgrimage to worship him. When word of their inquiry got to Herod, he was terrified. And not Herod alone, but most of Jerusalem as well. Herod lost no time. He gathered all the high priests and the religion scholars in the city together and asked, Where is the Messiah supposed to be born? They told him, Bethlehem, Judah territory. The prophet Micah wrote it plainly, It's you, Bethlehem, in Judah's land, no longer bringing up the rear. From you will come the leader who will shepherd, rule my people, my Israel. Herod then arranged a secret meeting with the scholars from the east. Pretending to be as devout as they were, he got them to tell him exactly when the birth announcement star appeared. Then he told them the prophecy about Bethlehem and said, Go find this child. Leave no stone unturned. As soon as you find him, send word, and I'll join you at once in, in your worship. Instructed by the king, they set off. Then the star appeared again, the same star they had seen in the eastern skies. It led them on until it hovered over the place of the child. They could hardly contain themselves. They were in the right place. They had arrived at the right time. They entered the house and saw the child in the arms of Mary, his mother. Overcome, they kneeled and worshipped him. Then they opened their luggage and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. In a dream, they were warned not to report back to Herod. So they worked out another route, left the territory without being seen, and returned to their own country. This is the gospel of the Lord for the people of God. This is, this is your, this is my story tonight, friends. See, all this whole time we've been building up to this very, very moment of Christmas. Think about that very first Christmas. Again, put yourself in Joseph and Mary's shoes. That You're trying to figure this whole thing out. You're out in a barn. You're trying to keep the kid warm. You're trying to keep yourselves warm. I guarantee they were hungry. They didn't know where to turn. And they're sitting in a manger, in a stall, with a bunch of stinking animals. Literally. And the animals are very intrigued. What's going on here? Why is this child being born? Why are you in our home? <laughs> and she has this baby. And these scholars, these, uh, these people from the east, sometimes they're referred to as magi. They show up and they see Herod. And they, says, uh, they come in and say, hey, where's the king of the Jews? Well, Herod, for those of you who don't know, he's a jealous guy. <laughs> very, very jealous. No one is going to rule those people other than Herod himself. And he brings all of his buddies, his, his friends, his, his amigos, his posse in and says, Hey, what's going on? Where did they say this king was going to be born? And they fill him in. Those, those folks who had studied religion had said, Here's where he's going to be born. Here's where, they, here's where they assume that this Christ child, the Savior, this king is going to be born. It's going to be in Bethlehem. So let's stop there and think about this, friends. What if today the Savior of the world was born in wherever you're watching? Would we notice? Or would we be like a lot of the people that walked by that stall? How many people walked past that stall with the Savior of the world and his parents? and didn't even notice, didn't even pay attention. 
just kept on going because they were so busy with what was going to happen next. How many of us do that in our own very everyday lives? We, we, we may walk past things or walk past people that are a reflection of us. Maybe they're the next Savior. Maybe they're the next person that's going to lead us into a relationship with God. Maybe, they're, maybe that person is a person that is of God and we did, again, we just walked past it. That was going on right then and there. But these magi, they, they'd been studying stuff, and they, they knew that this king had been born. And in this passage of Scripture, after they get out of Herod's watch, they get going down, the, they, they start following the star. They start following the star. What does the star represent? You got it. Light. The light of the world was shining right there in Bethlehem. And these guys were going to go find out where it was. How many of us today are going to find the star? We're going to go find the light that Jesus can give to us. And it says here in this passage of Scripture, I love it. It says they couldn't even contain themselves. How many of us on Christmas morning wake up and cannot contain ourselves? Kids, wherever you're watching. How many of you have had that childlike feel? Of, I just cannot wait to open this gift. You know, when, when, my, when I was growing up, my parents used to always put one gift under the tree. And we would sit there and guess what that thing was. And, we, and it, the excitement grew and built. as we Every night we would go, I, I don't know about my brothers, but I would go look at that and I would study it and I would think, I wonder what's in the box. I wonder what mom and dad bought me. To these magi, they've been waiting for this gift for a long, long time. And they could not contain their excitement the same way we can't contain our excitement when we open up a gift and we go, oh my goodness, just what I wanted. The magi were saying, this is exactly what we have been waiting for. And they were so overcome with emotion. Now imagine when they show up at the doorstep. There you got this new couple. Again, remember, you're supposed to be playing the part of Mary and Joseph here. What would you say if a bunch of strangers appeared? You're in the hospital. Or maybe you had this baby at your home, and a bunch of strangers appear. And are you going to let them in? At this point, they come walking in to this manger that everybody else was passing up. They were so overcome with emotion. They didn't, they didn't ask, can we hold the baby? They just looked at the baby and they did this. They just went exactly like this. But they didn't have anything to say. They were so overcome with emotion that they didn't know what to say. And they opened up their luggage. I love the way this passage is written. They opened up their luggage, the stuff that they've been traveling with. Now, if it would be like my luggage, my, my, my wife, Catherine, does a great job of packing us when we go on trips. She rolls this stuff so tight that we could go on a 10-day trip in a, in a carry-on. These guys, I guarantee you, had trunks with them. They've been riding camels. And they get to the place where the baby Jesus is, and they open up this trunk. And they dig through all their stuff, and they find the one gift. And they know that this gift that they're going to give to Jesus is nowhere, can't even compare to the gift that God just gave them. How would you feel if the only gift that you could give today was yourself to God? And you know what God is going to say? That's good enough. These guys grab their trunk, in their trunk, and they present the, the baby Jesus with gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And every one of them were representative of something. Gold was priceless. Gold was to show that the kingship of Jesus, the lordship of Jesus, was overwhelmingly going to be popular. 
It still is today. It wasn't to buy the love of Jesus. It was to give him back what is his. The frankincense represented that Jesus was going to be our high priest. Jesus was going to teach us a lot of stuff. And is still doing so today. Those candles that we lit are the gifts that Jesus gave to us of hope and peace and joy and love. And he would do this as a high priest. And the myrrh, the myrrh was foreshadowing his death. See, when you embalmed somebody after a crucifixion or after a death in that day and age, you would use this organic myrrh to, to wrap the body up in. Imagine Mary and Joseph. Imagine yourself if someone gave you something that was foreshadowing death. Other passages of Scripture will say that Mary... Mary held every one of these things near and dear to her heart, even the myrrh. These guys couldn't contain themselves. I asked a question last week uh, for at the end of our service, and I want to pick up where we left off there. How many of you have had the time to think about what you would like to give away this year. We asked to put it in the comments, and I'm going to ask you to do the same thing today. We're going to focus on hope, peace, joy, and love. And as we get ready to focus in on those types of candles that are lit here today, what are you going to give away? What is going to be your gift? If you, now we have to put ourselves in the Magi. Now we have to put ourselves into the the scholars, the astronomers that followed that star, that followed that light. I want you to lock in on this. What light are you going to bring to Jesus this year as your gift? <laughs> I've asked that question a couple times this week. What, what candle would we focus in on? And for the most part, it's love. Everybody says, I'm going I'm to love I'm going to love deeper. I'm going to love more meaningful. I'm going to be a pillar of love in the community. I pray that that's exactly what each and every person that has told me that they're going to do will be a part of this year. That, that Jesus, realize something, folks. Jesus didn't just stay in that manger. He didn't just stay with that livestock. Mary and Joseph didn't just stay right there. They got up the next morning and figured out where they were going to go and how they were going to get some food and eat and, and get, get going. They raised Jesus. Again, he'd had no instructions, right? And they raised him to be this loving child. And he taught them some things along the way. And that when we get to Easter, and, that's, and I pray that that's not when we see you next. I pray that today, today you say, Maybe it's just that I want to love God so much more that I want to learn about how God works in my life. I want to be peace-filled this year because this past year I have not been. I want to be full of joy and give it away to everybody that I see because this year it's been troublesome for me to find joy in anything. And I want to put my hope in Jesus instead of hope in every other thing else that the world throws at me. Maybe that's, maybe that's your prayer. Maybe that's your gift to God. Because Jesus came. Because God loved us so much that he sent that son of his. And, he, and they call him Jesus, Emmanuel. God is with us. I, I hope you, you were with us a couple weeks ago when we, we broke that down. God is with us. Tonight, this afternoon, whenever you're watching this, 
know that Christmas is every day. We have the opportunity of Christmas being each and every day. We have the opportunity of giving gifts each and every day. We have the opportunity of receiving gifts each and every day as well. May this Christmas be different than any other Christmas before. May it be just like 2020. May it be different than normal. May it be a time in which we reflect. May it be a time in which we ask Jesus to come in and calm us and instill in us the exact same calmness that was in Mary and Joseph over 2,000 years ago. Friends, it is here. Christmas has come. Merry Christmas. May you enjoy this day. May you enjoy the rest of this day. And may you enjoy the rest of the days to come. Because Christ, our Savior, is born. The light of the world is here. Let's pray. Gracious God, again, I thank you so much for this day in which we get to celebrate the birth of Jesus. Lord, we have, we have worked hard to get here. We are passionate about that. Lord, for, me, for many, it's, it's just another day. It's a day that people get together and celebrate. Lord, you're right. Today is a day we get to get together and celebrate the birth of Jesus. We're, we're getting ready to light some candles here and sing a song that many of us know, that many of us have heard. And as we do so, Lord, I thank you for blessing us with your son, Jesus. Again, I thank you for being your humble servant to deliver this message to the people today. Lord, may we put ourselves in Mary and Joseph's shoes. May we put ourselves sometimes in the Magi's shoes. May we be so overwhelmed with the love of Jesus that the only thing we know to do is just bow, to get on our knees and pray, and just to lower our head and say, You reign over us. Lord, I thank you for every person that is watching, wherever they're watching. I ask for protection. I ask for peace. I ask for them to have hope. I ask for each and every one of us to experience joy. And God, I ask that each and every one of us not only receive the love that you sent to us through Jesus, but somehow, some way, we show love and compassion to our fellow man not only this Christmas season, but throughout the year so that you may be glorified, not us, and that we bring a light into this dark world. It's in Jesus' name we pray and all God's people said, amen. At this time, I would love for you to, um, to do something pretty special. As we get ready to close out our service today, we are going to sing Silent Night. And it's, it's become a tradition in, in many churches, and, and of course it has become a tradition at ours as well, that this is a time in which we reflect on the light. So as we get ready to sing this song together, I ask you to take out your phone. Turn off all the lights. And if you're scared of the dark, uh, this is... This is it'll be over with in a, in a little bit. But you're going to have that light because darkness sometimes overwhelms us. You're going to have that flicker of light, either through your phone, maybe you have a candle, maybe you are going to use your Christmas tree. You turn out all the lights and just leave the Christmas tree on. As we get together to sing this today, I, I, I just kind of want to walk us through this, okay? So as we get ready to turn out our lights, we focus on this Advent candle as we sing Silent Night. Wherever you are, hold up your candle. Hold up your phone. Gaze at your Christmas tree and see the light of Jesus in your life.
I, I see the light of Jesus in mine. I'm overwhelmed with the love that Jesus has for me and for my family. The, the grace that he has for each and every one of us. Tonight, hold your candle high. Hold your light high. Let us sing. Gracious God, thank you so much. We've been waiting in anticipation and excitement for this Advent season to get to this pinnacle of the birth of Jesus. Tonight, wherever we are, I just ask that you calm us, allow the gifts of hope, peace, joy, and love to be instilled in us through Jesus. And that we might not only just accept those gifts that Jesus gave us, but that we will be willing to move into a different direction of giving them away, of being outwardly focused, of bringing hope to a dark world, of bringing peace to a dark world, of bringing joy to a dark world, of bringing love to a dark world, all through the light of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for anyone anywhere that is watching and worshiping with us today. May their Christmases be filled with your Holy Spirit. And it's in Jesus' name we pray and all God's people said, Amen. I hope that you have been blessed, not only just today, but through this Advent season. As we have went in and discovered who Jesus was and why He came, as we talked about His parents, Mary and Joseph, as we broke down the lineage of, of how deep that, that lineage of Jesus was before and is still going on today and how you and I are a part of that. I pray that you won't make this just your last stop with us. I hope that you will join us again as we worship next Sunday and the Sunday after that and the Sunday after that. I pray that you will join us in just saying, you know what, I, I want to worship Jesus. I want to learn more about Jesus. I, I want to be filled with His Spirit. May you have a very Merry Christmas. May you be blessed. Know that Jesus loves you. Know that I love you. Merry Christmas. God bless. <laughs>